Hello everybody and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we are going to be covering a simple widget and blueprint system that will allow us to pause our game and then unpause it whenever we feel. Yay! So we can stop the gameplay and we can just hop straight back into the action with a simple press of a button. Now to do this, this is actually really, really simple. We just need to create a widget and a little bit of blueprint. So we're gonna hop right in. I'm just gonna get rid of the blueprint code off screen really quick. And now we're gonna start with our widget. The first thing that we're gonna do inside of an empty folder or wherever you wanna put this, it doesn't have to be an empty folder, it's where I like to work. Uh, we're gonna right click user interface because this is what our widget is. Click the widget blueprint. And now on the selector, we're just gonna click user widget and we'll call this my widget pause now call this whatever you want i'm just calling it my widget pause because i'm going to be able to find this a lot easier with that name now if we double click this and bring it over from my other screen what you'll be met with is just a big empty canvas with nothing but a resize arrow in there now what the resize arrow is for if you float your mouse over it, you can see you get the the resizer widget if you click and drag you'll be able to change your working area to any resolution that you wish. And it has markers that show you the common resolutions so that you can try and match your resolution. Now you can see here, it's not really snapping and that's because we have nothing in the canvas right now, but we can get it to snap later. So I'm just gonna drop this here right now. And on the left-hand side, we have our palette, which gives us all the different things that we can put inside of our widget. We're just making a simple pause widget, so all we need is text. So we're just gonna click and drag text and drop that into our canvas. And now we have a text blocks, uh, a text block rather, which is highlighted by this lovely green color. And now if we were to grab our resizer, you can see it's resizing that green and you can see it's making the text bigger or smaller based on the resolution that the canvas is currently at. So you can see it's automatically resizing based on resolution size. Now you set this to whatever you're comfortable working in. My uh, monitor is currently set to 4k so I'm just going to resize this all the way up to 4k and you'll notice that once you have something like the text block which has the lines if you get close enough to a, a native resolution it will actually snap to that to make this a little bit easier for you so just get it to snap to where you need it in my case there we are and now we can start working on our widget so all we need to do really is customize what our text says and the position that it's in. So uh, don't worry if you have clicked away from your text box, if it isn't green, just find it again by floating your mouse over, you'll get a blue outline and just click and then it will be uh, selected again. Or if you've got multiple things here and you can't find the right one, then over on the left, you have the hierarchy and you can do the same thing here. If you float over it, it will highlight, you can click it, it will go green and then you can start using it again. Now on the right hand side are our details and this is everything included inside of this widget piece. In our case, everything to do with our text. So what I'm gonna do first at the top, we have text, text block. I'm just gonna change this to the word paused in big capital letters, paused, there we are. And I'm gonna leave the color and opacity as it is for this. I don't need to change this, same as the fonts. Now you can add more fonts to Unreal Engine, but I'm not gonna be showing you how to do that in this uh, tutorial. I might show that in something else later. Uh, the typeface, we're just gonna leave bold. The size, I'm gonna bump this up to 60. Now obviously, customize this how you want. I want this to be quite large so that it's obvious that it's paused. So I'm making this 60. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scroll on down to my justification here. And in the middle, we have a justification for a line text center, like so. Now we don't seem to have a uh, the option to align the center um, vertically. We only have the option horizontally at the moment for whatever reason um, Epic have betrayed us. So to get this down towards the middle, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight the very start of my paused here so that my, my little type icon is right at the beginning. I'm gonna hold shift and press enter a few times and let that update so that it moves my paused down to around the center, there we are. So now that that's there, one last thing I'm just gonna to do to make this look ever so slightly nicer. I'm just gonna zoom in so I can see this and we have this shadow offset and the shadow color. I'm just gonna increase my shadow offset to five in both the X and the Y. And the shadow color, you can't see the shadow because the alpha is zero. If we just pop the alpha up to one, you can see now this has got a nice shadow. We can see this a little bit more obviously if we change the color like so. Obviously set this to whatever you like. You can have this bright neon pink if you like. Let's go with that. We'll go with bright neon pink. Okay, so we're gonna compile this and we can save this. 
Hooray. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to close this down for now. We're done with that for the time being. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up the logic for the actual pausing. Now, you can do this in practically any blueprint that you can give controls to. In this case, just because it's going to be easier, I'm just going to put this in the level blueprint. To access the level blueprint up on the top left here, we've got this list of world blueprints available. If we click this, it's the three little boxes that are connected by lines next to the cube with a plus. We can go ahead and press open level blueprint, and this will give us the blueprint for this level. Now, what we're going to do is first we're going to get the player, we're going to assign it the widget, and then we're going to hide and unhide the widget based on a key press and pause the game and unpause the game. So first thing we need to do is we need to initialize the widget and assign it to the player. So we're going to get begin play because we want this to happen as soon as the game starts. And we're going to drag out from the execute pin and we're going to say create widget. Like so. Now the class is going to be set to nothing. Under class, we're going to set this to my pause widget or my widget pause, whatever it is you've called it. And you'll see that we have an owning player, which is blank. This is going to be the player that actually has this widget on their screen. In our case, uh, we need to get player controller, like so. And this is going to initialize our player controller. We're going to get the zero here. Zero is actually player one because the amount of players is held in an array. And an array is essentially just a list. And numerical arrays always start at zero, which is confusing if you don't know that. But the first is always a zero and the second is always a one and so on. So we want to give this widget to player one. We're just going to plug this into owning player. There we go. The widget now belongs to player one. However, it's not going to be on our screen. We have to drag out from the return, pow uh, return value of our widget, and we're just going to say add to viewport, like so. And now it's going to add this to the viewport when we press play. We can compile this, we can minimize, and if we press play, we'll get our paused on screen. Now, obviously, it's not doing what we want it to do. We are not currently paused, and it's stuck there forever. We can't get rid of it. So what we can do is we can also do a little bit of blueprint inside the widget. Now you can do this in the level blueprint as well, but I'm going to do it in here just so that you can see that we have access to this inside of the widget. So reopen the widget and on the top right hand side next to where the designer is lit up in blue, you can click graph and this will actually take you to a widget blueprint. Now event construct is the same as begin play. So we're just going to get rid of the tick and we're going to get rid of the, uh, the other construct. And from the event construct, we're just going to set visibility like so. Uh, target self, and we want the visibility to be hidden. We're going to compile, and what this is going to do is as soon as this is created, so here we're creating the widget, once the widget is created, it's going to be invisible. So we press play, and now we no longer see the paused because it's hidden. Okay, so now we're going to reopen our level blueprint, and what we're going to do is we're going to select ourselves a key or a button, whatever you want to use. Uh, it'll all work the same uh, to unhide that blue, uh, that widget and to pause our game. So we're going to right click. In my case, I want to use keyboard P. P is for paused. So keyboard P. And this will give us P. Now you can use any key that you like for this. I'm using keyboard P. So what we want to do is we want to unhide when we pause. So from the create my widget pause widget, we actually have the return value, which is a reference to the widget itself. We can drag out from this and we can set visibility like so. And you can see here set visibility target is a widget because we've dragged from the correct place. The context knows that this is a widget. The visibility, we want this to be visible. So we'll drag our P pressed into this and we'll press compile. We can minimize this down, we can press play. And once we're in there, if we press P, it will bring this up. If we press B again, nothing. No, it's also not pausing the game. And that's because we haven't set this logic up yet. So back to the level blueprint we go. And now we can drag from here and we can set game paused. Now what this is doing is it's gonna check for the paused. It's a Boolean, which is a yes or a no. If there's no tick, it is a no. So what we're gonna do is click this little box to add a tick and this will now be true. So it will say set game paused equals true. Is the game paused? Yes, it will be. So now if we compile and we press play, once we press P, the game is paused. You can see that none of the dots are moving and we can't move our character anymore. You can hear me hitting the keyboard. I'm trying to move it, but we can't. So we're just gonna press escape to get that out and we're just gonna fix that up. So the way we do this is we do the same thing, but in reverse, we can highlight these, Control C, Control V to copy paste. 
we'll just align these a little better. Uh, we'd need to take the return value from the widget and plug this into the set visibility so it knows what it's setting. We're going to change the visibility on the second one to hidden, and on the second game paused, untick the box, and it will unpause. However, doo -doo -doo, we are currently using P. We can't just use P again because it will do something different. And we don't just want to plug this into the end of here because it will just do both at one after the other or pause, unpause. What we're going to do is before we say set visibility from the pressed P or whatever key it is you're using, we're going to use what's called a flip-flop. And a flip-flop will do the A logic the first time it is executed. And the second time it's executed, it will do B. And then it will do A again, and then B again. So if we take the B and plug this into the hidden and not paused, and we compile, what this will do is when we press P, B, P, oh my goodness, P the first time, it will go through the A, set visibility to visible, and pause the game. When we press it again, it's going to go to B, which is hidden and paused. However, if you're one step ahead of me and you've pressed play and you've tried to test it, you'll notice it doesn't work. No. And the reason it doesn't work is because our inputs by default don't work while the game is paused. So we select our input and on the right hand side under details, you can see execute when paused. We just need to tick this button, compile, minimize this down, press play, P for pause, P for unpause. The game now pauses and unpauses and brings up our widget. And you remember, I told you that the widget size will resize itself based on the resolution. Well, if I pause this and I press F11 to go full screen, you'll see that it moves the pause to the middle on its own automatically. You see that? It's readjusting for my current uh, resolution. So there you go. That's how we can pause and unpause and a very quick introduction into widgets. Yay. Hopefully that has helped you and you've learned something today. Um, please do check out the description for my Discord server and my Twitter. I'm going to be trying to post videos a lot more often. Um, some of you who have been around for ages know that this is a remake of a video from five years ago. I am going to be refreshing my content from the past to work with the new versions of the engine. And I'm going to be making lots of new content, obviously, because the engine has so many more features now. So expect a lot of Dean. I'm going to throw Dean at you. Just constant Dean. Right. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.